My name is John. This is I'm Mateo. Mateo. Um, we're the owners of Golasso Kits, uh, the biggest vintage soccer store in the United States. We're childhood friends from Brazil, actually. From Sao Paulo. From Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, we've known each other since middle school. Uh, Around the 7th, 6th, 7th grade, Mateo moved to Mexico where we, we lost contact for the longest time. Uh, then we ended up both going to university here in the United States. And uh, by coincidence, uh, we both got our first job at the For Lauderdale Strikers down here in South Florida where we reconnected unintentionally after 10 years or so, maybe more. It was a coincidence. And we were, we really, we were neighbors and we didn't know it. We wanted a, a bigger spot so it would be more comfortable for, for our clients. We wanted a bigger spot to be able to display all of our jerseys and memorabilia that we have over the store. And we also were really excited about the potential of the outside part of the property. And we have some, some plans and ideas for, for exploiting that. And it just, it's a space that gives us a lot of flexibility and let us grow, you know, two, three, four more years in into this space. Uh, and we were kind of at our at our limit at the other at the other spot. Yeah, we could have pushed it a little more in our own yeah, location definitely, definitely. Uh, if we wanted to. But um, we also and simultaneously we felt like it was ready. Uh, we were ready to make the next step uh, as far as our store was was concerned. And like Mateo mentioned, the outdoor space allows us to throw events, do watch parties, whatever it is. So that's going to be the the next phase of, of this operation. I think I've always been more of the collector, right? For sure, yeah. I've always had jerseys to play soccer and obviously, you know, because of that, I always had, I don't know, 15, 20 jerseys in rotation that I would play with. But Mateo was the one with the jerseys from the 80s, the 90s. You know. Yeah, I've always, it's always been kind of something that I've enjoyed doing. Um, I remember, two or three things distinctly, which is, first of all, is my my uncle Fernando. He would always give me the shirt, the Palmeiras shirt, the new Palmeiras shirt every year, either for Christmas or my birthday, or he would just gift it to me. He didn't have children back then, so I was kind of his his uh, his kid. Um, he's the person who took me to my first game as well. He's still till this day, like I'll go to Brazil in a couple of days and I'll, I know I'll have like the new Palmeiras jersey waiting for me from him. Um, and then my dad, through his travels all over the world, uh, because of, of business, he would always bring me shirts from, from different places, and that kind of became a thing. Uh, we obviously, in Brazil, grew up playing soccer, playing a lot of soccer, and we would wear that um, to play. But I would, al I would always, something that was always distinctive of myself was, and when I went to school with John, is every day I would go with a shirt because I would collect and every day was just a random shirt. So you would you look at photos from, from our childhood and I'm always wearing a soccer shirt. I think as you get older, you're, you have kind of a, a more, I don't care attitude. Uh, I don't care about what others think. And um, till this day, I'll, I'll throw a, a soccer shirt on in a random day. And uh, I love it. Like I, it's a it's a chance to like express yourself, and, and especially as immigrants far away from home. Like when you put your team shirt on, it's it's special. You know, it's 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 a different feeling. You're like showing to someone that you support that team, and yeah. I think there's a couple of shirts that we've sold that we kind of regret a little bit selling. Like the El Salvador jersey that sold yesterday? Yeah, yeah, that one hurt. Yeah, 1997 El Salvador jersey, pretty iconic. A lot of the jerseys that El Salvador is using now is inspired by that jersey. Um, yeah. And we had the original one here in store until yesterday. Lanzera, right? The Lanzera, yeah, 1997. Well, to start the business in general, uh, that idea started from me. I had lost my job during the, the lockdown. And uh, I told Mateo, hey, I'm going to throw some, some jerseys for my collection on the internet to make some extra cash and just to do something. You know, everyone was bored at home. And uh, that idea resonated with Mateo. Um, he obviously had a bunch of jerseys himself, a lot of which are just in boxes under his bed. So he was like, hey, I don't mind giving some up. 
And, um, but we did it very like, um, I mean, we, we took it seriously, but we had no idea where it would go. It was just like, hey, let's just do this for fun and see what happens. And we immediately saw that with minimal effort, there was some traction. So once the lockdown was over and stuff, and you know, we, we went back to normal life, we were like, hey, let's, let's keep this going. Let's take it seriously because there's something here. So I guess th that's how the idea of the store originated. But for at that time, we were thinking about just staying online um, because during the lockdown, you would turn on the news and everything you would hear and read was retail is dying. Burlington is closing a million yeah. locations. Yeah. And we're like, man, are we going to be the only idiots to we were start? A yeah, we're pretty, we were pretty against it. Yeah, yeah well, actually. Yeah, so we we started the business in my apartment that we moved to like a little we work unit type area but we were getting so many messages from people saying they want to see the jerseys in person because it's such a niche product and you're dealing with so many different brands from different eras the sizes vary a lot the condition of the jerseys vary a lot because a lot of them are secondhand obviously and i remember we would we would ha when people would come in we would have to like move our desks and the rack so it would be a bit more comfortable for yeah. them to come in and yeah because we were a little corner it was like a little corner rent for us to work and yeah and that we just saw it as storage space yeah yeah no just to get out of his closet yeah just to leave my apartment yeah <laughs> so then that became small as well and we were kind of looking what what's next and um really kind of the only viable thing that appeared that was within our budget at the time was a storefront it wasn't even like we were looking for a storefront we were looking for any type of space any type of office storage anything just more space and it happened to be storefront we happened to start opening some days and we're like you know what like this actually makes sense and we started opening on saturday yeah um we extended just hours yeah, we started like, doing it was started appointment only yeah, then appointment we were like, only yeah yeah now no we actually need store we need time to open and close yeah. because people would just show up yeah. without letting us know and yeah so so then that's when we realized like oh we we have a business here like this isn't a hobby anymore like no we have customers we have people who want to come see us so. if you're a fan of soccer in general and you collect jerseys and you're not just looking for one specific team or one specific jersey coming in here is like going to disneyland and um and you'll appreciate that it's like fun to go through them and see them in person and you might see something that you would have missed online and uh, you know, or some you'd literally have to see in person to fully appreciate yesterday someone spent four hours here yeah just looking at every single thing every single detail asking questions about things and we love that like that's what we we like to say that we as fans built something for the fans right for for fans like us and that's why I think it's been so natural and, and, and organic is because this is how we live basically and we just we're just really making something for for others to to enjoy something that we would enjoy right yeah definitely that's uh that's the number one motivation even to to keep going is like yeah, yeah. We, yeah we're making something that we would enjoy as consumers so and like I'm sure John like shares this this opinion, but like one of the coolest thing of this store is when people from all across the world and the country come in and share their stories. Like we're here right now, and we're speak and we're we're having a connection because of soccer, because of the shirts, and that happens a lot. Like John sometimes like sends me a message, super excited, like hey, a guy from Serbia came in, and we talked about Red Star for 45 minutes, and it's like I love that. Like that's what we live for, you know, and um people you're building a community yeah yeah we, we we really are and um we had our grand opening the other day and we were really surprised with just how many people showed up and how many people support and uh the other the other thing i wanted to mention is another really gratifying moment which i don't even know if that happens that that much anymore but like is when we have a shirt from portugal and it goes back to portugal or a shirt from germany and it goes back to germany like it goes back home you know yeah. and who knows where where that shirt would be if it weren't for us existing you know um this like a lot of these that are hanging up um but i think the craziest one like by 
leaps and bounds as the Strikers one because it's original from the time and it's an absolute like pristine like museum condition. Um, I think that's like the one like that's a shirt that would sell for $400, $500 without it doing any research beforehand. Yeah. If there's even any for sale. And like that's a shirt that will never ever ever sell, you know. And the Adriano one, for example, same thing. Right? Yeah, we have some match worns, we have autograph jerseys. Yeah. Those are one of a kind. Uh, you can't replicate a match worn jersey. So. There's a Nick Romando uh, Miami Fusion shirt here. It was used in one of his last games, or so one of the Fusion's last games. Yeah. It was given to us. Or we, yeah, given to us by someone, and the only thing he said, it's signed by Nick Romano. He said, just the only thing I ask is never sell this. Mm -hmm. Like, just have it there so people can see it and, and appreciate it. Because also, one of our biggest motivations to continue the store is also to talk about the history of football in, in the US, in Latin America, but also and mainly in Miami. This has been a hotbed for soccer for many years, you yeah. know, for many years. So now more than ever, we want to tell that story. Yeah, you know? soccer in Miami didn't start with Messi, didn't start with Beckham. It didn't even start with the Miami Fusion. Yeah, it, it goes it goes far back, and um, that story is often uh, not told. Yeah, we were talking about how uh, how the best part is uh, when when we get a jersey as opposed to selling it, and uh, that's like the main part of that is like getting a jersey where you don't know what team it is. Sometimes you don't even know what country it is. Definitely don't know what year it was. And uh, doing that research, because you go down rabbit holes. Yeah. Um, so like you find a jersey and you see it's, it's written in some Southeast Asian language. And you're like, okay, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, where's this from? And then you research and then you find out that some player you didn't know at the end of his career played there. And Even some mainstream teams, like we find some like niche or like super weird stories all the time all the time uh, yeah of shirts with that were used with like a specific patch or a specific pattern and like was used once or twice and we were talking about something like this yesterday yeah yeah like a good example is alianza lima's purple jersey yeah. for example we had one of those we didn't know the story behind it turns out alianza lima every october wears a purple jersey um it, it's a religious thing because of the the saint of the club uh, so yeah, so you go down rabbit holes and you learn so much. It's, it's, it's definitely the best part because yeah. it also mixes with uh, culture and history. It goes beyond soccer most of the time. So if you look at it from the aspect of the soccer fan, it's going to live forever. Uh, if you look at it from the aspect of fashion, which we, we've been getting a lot in the past couple of years is people walk into the store and tell me, I've never watched a soccer game in my life, but Kim Kardashian wore this. I want a Kappa shirt. Yeah, yeah I, I want a Kappa because Kappa is really in right now. That might go away, um, but I don't. I don't think that uh, that's a good or a bad thing. It's just a thing, and we welcome everyone in our store, regardless of the reason that they they're looking for jerseys. And uh, at the end of the day, the jerseys. There, there's enough soccer fans to, to support this business, whether it's fashionable or not. Yeah, and fashion, the fashion part is just a plus, I think, for us. Yeah, I was telling, on, I yeah. was telling John a story about um, a K-pop band that randomly, for some reason, one of the singers wore a Guarani shirt from, from, Brazil. from Brazil, from the state of Sao Paulo, in Campinas. And the shirt is literally like, viral sold out but they had to remanufacture it because ne neither the club or the brand that made it in the 80s because it's like a shirt from the 80s had that shirt yeah. and she explained that it was like from a tour a guy knew the doctor and this shirt ended up in in korea and seoul and like in her dad's closet for some reason and she just thought it was cool and picked it up but like if you go look at the video clips like that she uses that shirt a lot she used that shirt on tour on uh, so it's you never like all, all this to say like you never know when when something can can happen and like the perfect example of this is the world cup like we never knew argentina was going to win and there's no way of preparing for that demand ahead of time right because 
Yeah, because if Argentina loses to Saudi Arabia and, and then they tie against the next team and they're out, yeah, against Mexico. You have 200 happen. Argentina shirts sitting here that no one wants, yeah. you know? We just had this discussion like last week. I like, I really like his answer, so I'll let you, I'll let you. Yeah, I, I what, what my impression is, which is what I told Mateo was that it's kind of like a third lane in between the original jersey from the 80s that's worth three, four hundred dollars, a fake jersey that's worth twenty, thirty dollars, and then you have the reissues that are right down the middle. Uh, obviously, we'll pick those over the fake jerseys. They are authentic. They are made by the brand. Um, it's not the actual thing, but it's as far as the design is is concerned, it's identical. You just don't have that vintage feel to it. So it's it's kind of its own lane. We we have reissued jerseys here in our store. We actually just got Boca Juniors, Olan reissued jerseys. Um, so yeah, so we're fans. We think it's its own lane. It's not here to substitute the vintage jerseys. Hopefully, uh, people who uh, don't want to spend that money see the reissues as an opportunity to buy something authentic, but still within your budget. So yeah, we're we're all we're all about it. Yeah, and I just had one comment on this: is for us Brazilians, the Ronaldo '98 shirt, topic, whatever, is like super traumatic. So yeah. I can't understand why like that shirt is even reissued like i understand it was a iconic world cup for him but for us brazilians it's like literally one of the most yeah it's like one of the the wounds that hurt the most still as a fan like um that we lost that final um, yeah that, that was definitely made with the neutral fan yeah, yeah. with like the, for fashion and yeah. and all that stuff or just the average you know if you're friend no no not if you're french actually but like yeah if you're mexican or whatever yeah. for you that was just yeah. like an iconic world cup final yeah. ronaldo's an iconic yeah. player you don't care the result yeah so that makes sense but for, yeah for brazilians that's a terrible jersey to remake yeah <laughs> remake the 2002 I think first of all, we're very appreciative of every single sale, every single person that walks in, even if they don't buy anything, because we know that we're not selling something that is um, that is uh, essential. You know, th like when people are spending money on soccer jerseys, it's their uh, it's their um, disposable. This, disposable income. Exactly, that was the, <laughs> the term I was thinking of, and. Um, and so we're very grateful because you, most people don't have a lot of disposable income. And when you do, you can spend it on whatever you want. So the fact that you decide to spend it on soccer jersey and specifically with us is very gratifying. So whether you spend $10 or $1,000, we're, we're very grateful. And, um, and I, I like to think that we make that known to our followers and, and to the customers. And uh, I think that's one of the appeals. Yeah, we, I, I believe it we also so. always like to have fair prices. Um, we prefer something to sell than to put an extra 20 bucks, 15 bucks on it, you know? Um, especially nowadays, um, a new MLS shirt, if you want to put a name and number, authentic is like 230 bucks with tax. It's like, at what point did it get to here? And here you can find an MLS shirt from maybe four, five, six years ago for 40 bucks, for 50 bucks, or even brand new for 50, 40, you know, yeah. depending on the team. So we, another big, big, big value of ours is that we like to think that we have something for everybody at all prices, at all wants, needs. Um, you'll find something for you here. It kind of goes back to what we said about making a business that we would be a consumer of, yeah. because I would never walk into a store and, and spend $200 on a jersey, uh, like from a current season, you know, if we're talking vintage, it's a little different, but but I would walk into a store and spend forty, fifty dollars on a new jersey. So yeah. and and that's and that's a spot that, that we try to stay at.